Hello, children. Are you ready for some cutting up and kikiing? Are you ready for a gay old time? Well, I hope you are, because now it's time for Hey Queen with your host, Johnny McGovern. Pink Powder Puffs, and welcome to another <laughs> one-of-a-kind episode of Hey Queen, with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Today in the house, we have a first. Yes, that's right, a first. In our very own studio is a queen from the first ever season of Ruba Mau Mau. Yup, the legendary <laughs> season that started it all. We have the avant-garde, hat-wearing, super talented inspiration for the song Lady Boy. I'm talking about Angina. Yeah! yeah. Yes! But before we bring her out, I gotta talk about another first. She's the first one I call when I need an ample bosom to lie my head on. <laughs> need a batch of chicken fried to perfection? Call her first. Especially if you have some Lowry seasoning salt. Without her, I need first aid. It's Miss Lady Rekajar! <laughs> Hello, Hello. Hey, Queen, you look great. Well, you look great. Well, you know, I'm trying, bitch. Look at your fucking t-shirt. That's I so know, dynamite. That's a Hunties exclusive, Looks honey. wonderful. Yes, I think it's a she man I think it's a Shahiro. It's a Shahiro. Shahiro. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Shahiro. I don't know. It's, it's, all, it's all wrapped in it's one. It's all everything. Yeah. You know what? He, her, her Shira she will not be <laughs> uh, kept down by your gender identity issues. You're right. He's got he, she, she they, Shahira. they, Shahira, Shahira. they <laughs> is going to be whoever <laughs> they, them wants. Okay, because them babies is who they wants to be. And exactly as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of people who look gorgeous and whoever they are, they want to be. Oh. I'm talking about you with this hair, well, honey. You no, know, I like to give a little preschool teacher mixed with arts teacher mixed with <laughs> slut. Oh, okay. <laughs> you do seem like, if I was like a five-year-old and you were my teacher, <laughs> honey, I'd be like, I love Miss Couture. She's so funny. <laughs> and she makes funny voices. <laughs> and sometimes strange men just come to the classroom and she goes to the bathroom with them for 10 minutes and weird sounds. <laughs> Come out of the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> that would be the broom closet. I ain't got time for the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the broom closet. Yes. Please. Please. <laughs> You're also giving me kind of a Ursula type of lip. Well, like uh, a witchy lip. Yeah, it's uh, preschool art teacher, all the rest, but then a witchy <laughs> lip. Okay, well, you know, when OCC Cosmetics send you something, mm -hmm. you got to make the best of it. So I took two colors, wrapped them up together. I call it an ombre, but somebody told me it's just being lazy, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Lady Red's makeup tutorial. First, you're gonna do a, and then 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 we're done. Thank you very much. It's pretty much what we do at Print by Dre. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, normally, Lady Red, this is the time where we introduce our guest band leader or our band leader, Adam Joseph. Right. But Adam Joseph's on tour. Right. And our guest band leader canceled. At 8.30 this morning. Well, you know, you can't expect everybody to do everything, you know, but that's why we always, because, you know, we started the show, so we always keep a ram in the bush, right? Yes, well, the thing is, even though I feel it's a little bit of... <laughs> 8 30 is a little too late to cancel, <laughs> Miss Waco. <laughs> that doesn't mean we won't have somebody singing a theme song, right. because luckily... I got a singing bitch right here. <laughs> we got a singing bitch right here. I mean, when you can do it all, you know. <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah, you just don't spread yourself too thin, but you do it all, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't spread thin, you spread out. No, you know, I do, uh, yeah, I don't spread thin. <laughs> I spread evenly, all the way to the corners, you know. Mm. I'm a fat girl, I like to get it all in. Yeah. <laughs> so, lucky treat for you, Lady Brad, will be sitting here, then she's gonna run her ass over to the band leader part, <laughs> then she's gonna run her ass over to Lady Red corner. Just like season one. <laughs> Fuck it. We don't need all these extra people. Fuck that. We got new furniture. Bitch, we right. doing it ourselves. Fuck them all. They can all cancel. 
am so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a great show today. Angina is here. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so she's gonna, you'll sing her little theme song, and in the meantime, as the jib flies past, you're gonna see our thoughty producer, Walter Del Mar, dancing his heart out, getting that precious camera time. So we'll be back with Angina right after this very gay break. Yeah! It's gonna be hot, hot, hot. It's Hey Queen Hot Tea, yeah. the show where we sip steaming hot celebrity lives and throw Hollywood shade. I'm your host, Mr. Johnny McGovern, with my favorite hilarious people Julie Goldman, Lady Red Couture, the beautiful Brandy Howard. So, oh God, it's, it's so hot, I don't wanna touch it, but I just can't resist. <laughs> Real Housewives, real plastic surgery. Richard Simmons oh. transition. She looks like Kelly Osborne. Tracy Mattel. Yeah. Manila Luzon. Yeah. Yeah. Brandy oh. Bad News Boy. Right? Callum Best. Obviously, <laughs> he's good at what he does because he's fucking the best of the best. Kylie, Chloe, and Kim have not gotten near a white dick since junior high. Uh, Release the Kraken! I cannot deal with that at all. I will go crazy. It's making me crazy right now. And now I'm insane. Oh, but if you want the tea, honey, the total tea for all. No old the tea. Queen. Dance like a straight go-go boy. Season one diva who's known for her big heart and her tiny hat, but she's been leading a double life this whole time. We're gonna find all about it today. I'm talking about the gorgeous Anjana. <laughs> So, so dainty and fishy, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here she is, Angina. Yes. <laughs> or should I say, Peck Peck Galore. Oh, my God. Where, did, where did you find that? Oh, honey, I did my research, darling. You Your original drag name. It was. Peck Peck Galore. It was. Yes, it was. It was back in like 2001 in New York City. I think trying to come up with a drag name that was original but yet catchy. Right. And I have this fascination with like vaginas. You do? I mean, they're <laughs> fucking gross. <laughs> right? Like... Lady Red seems to have one as well. <laughs> a fascination and an actual one. Oh, well, you never know. <laughs> she has a pocket pussy. She keeps it in her pocket. Okay, I'm going to get a show pussy. Ooh. Oh, my God. Ooh, oh, don't get her started on show pussy. <laughs> but actually, before we get started, I think I need a booster seat. Right. <laughs> well, that ain't <laughs> Queen Pillow is there yeah. for a reason. Honey. I mean, Get this right is, on it. Pe- this prop is, yourself up. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait. I'm, this is the fan, bigger than you. Oh shit! It you gotta do work. it back to front. All right, you gotta go like this. Well, no, it's the other way. Turn it around. This is broken. <laughs> I'm fucking season one. Why give me a broken fan? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is we believe. I spent the whole first part <laughs> yes. of this season on China doing it wrong. So. Well, see, no, no see. wait, you just gotta, nope, you gotta, <laughs> no. I like this one better. Don't anyway. even try it, Angina. <laughs> there you go, Angina. All right. Now, there you go. This way? Uh-huh. Uh, ah. Well, that's stupid. Okay. <laughs> 
So pet pet galore. <laughs> yes. So you were sitting in the basement of APT or wherever. I was. How did you know? Oh, you know everything about me. This Darling, is scary. You're on A Queen. That's what happens. This is scary. So you were out clubbing with the kids, trying yeah. to think. Your peck peck galore seemed like it was too long of a name. It was too long of a name, and while it was inspired by a very beautiful figure. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I like vagina so much, but oh, right, um, peck peck means, means vagina. vagina in my language, right. but like for teenagers. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? There's like variations. Oh, of really? Like, yeah. There's like this peck peck and another. I oh, forget okay. which one's the one. I have to Google it for you. But, <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Anyway, so there's this fascination with that. And then, you know, James Bond, the whole thing, like, right. um, like a secretive woman, like sexy, but like in you know, like something. So I was like, all right, pick a sounds good. And then like over time, which is probably like a year, I was like, I don't like it. Uh huh. I hate it. Right. It needs to be like shorter, to the point, just one word, like a Madonna. Uh huh. Of course. Like a share. Mm hmm. I mean, you know, eventually I was gonna be an icon. Yes. So, <laughs> so I needed it to be one word and. One night out to dinner on my birthday um, when I was like 23, uh -huh. they're all like, just be vagina. You love vagina. I'm like, no. No, that's too I have, far. No, no, that's like too legit. I'm going to be on Gina. Mm. So, anyway, the name is taken from my middle name, which is Ong. Right. And then the last three letters of vagina, which God didn't bless me with, so I had to come up with my own angina. <laughs> yes, you did. It's bigger and more powerful. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, now, I was just dreaming and hoping I was gonna see you with a tiny hat today. Oh, okay, full disclosure, I totally, I got up at 6.30 this morning. Right. Because the call time was at 10. I know. So you're probably watching this in the evening, but mm. who cares? <laughs> And then it's I, a daytime yeah, show, darling. It's a daytime show. Look at our We're audience. Yeah. You get a car. You get a car. You don't get nothing. Um, you get a vagina. You get a backpack. You get a vagina. <laughs> so it's the the ten year anniversary of your season on Drag Race. Is it? Yeah. Or the ten, you know, it's been ten seasons. <laughs> I assume it's been ten years, right? Wait, huh? I'm Asian, but I can't seem to do the math. <laughs> well, needless to say, yeah, it's needless been a to say, it's been a long honey. fucking time. And you know, you I was still look just as gorgeous and snatched as uh, you did then. No, actually, I look a hot mess then. <laughs> but thank you to all of my friends and the one who taught me how, um, you know, the magic of the brush and blending oh, right. and you know, makeup in general. I mean, that must have been a, a totally crazy experience because how long had you been doing drag when you went, got on Drag Race? Because you'd been doing it for fun, really, more right. than... But it was more like, okay, so like you said, I was living in New York City. Right. I was partying at APT yep. at Hero and I was seeing people like, you know, Xander and I was seeing yes. people like Glenn Moore. I was like a Kevin Aviance and it was mm -hmm. like not drag per se. It was yeah, just it was like giving looks. Cunty. It was a cunt. It was cunty giving looks. And yeah. not even, it wasn't even like so much party kid either. It was just like something, yeah. right? It was a generation of like something that gave no shits yeah. except for their outfits. Yeah. And I was really inspired by that. Uh -huh. And so that's kind of how it started. And I was super okay with like one eye with eyeshadow and one without. Right. Yeah. You know, I was well, super okay. Well, that's very obvious of <laughs> yeah, you. Like, yeah. you know, that a very beat face, no tuck, no tits, right. a heavy shoulder or whatever. That is a very amazing uh, NYC type of exactly. look. Exactly. And I was really inspired by that. So that's how I started back in, I moved there in 2001 and I, I got into it like six months you know, as soon as, I, like six months after I moved there, I got really into it because I was inspired by these people that I've met along right. the way. And then it wasn't until like 2003, four, three or four, that I started actually like playing with more makeup because I was working at Lucky Chang's. Right. Which is no longer there. <laughs> I right? mean, that in itself is its own thing. Yeah, Lady Red, did you ever know about that? I've heard about Lucky Chang's, but I never got to work there because I like money. <laughs> oh, well, bitch. Now, when you were, before we go all the way into the Drag Race thing, so you were in New York working a, a real job, right? I was, yes. In, in fashion and merchandising. Yeah, visual merchandising. Visual merchandising. For Wet Seal at for first? Wet Seal. Yes, I hate funny. her. <laughs> I fucking hate her. She knows everything. Yeah, wet Seal. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing. Get that your I'm, low slung I, glitter belt I, jeans, honey. <laughs> Our first walk on. God, wet fucking seal. <laughs> so basically, I was in Seattle working at Wet Seal, right. and I had like this big dream of moving to New York City yeah. in 2001. So I visited it in July of 2001, and um, no, sorry, July of 2000. And I was working for Wet Seal, and then I went there, and you know, it's like I'm 18, 19 years old, and I'm yeah. like. What is the city? This is You've only seen it in like TVs and like movies, but when you actually get there and you're in that city, you just have this like energy with the city and you're just every it, it was amazing. So anyway, um so I went back to Seattle and I told my boss I really want to move to New York City. Can I work at Wet Seal in New York City? Because it will be fierce. <laughs> I can wear my flare jeans amazing. with sequin sides, Little you know, light. everything. So anyway, they transferred me. And then that's when um, I moved there in 2001. And then fast forward to meeting all of these people and then becoming like some sort of alternative type of queen. Because mm -hmm. there's obviously different elements or different levels in drag. There's, yeah. you know, illusionist. There's just female impersonator. There's like art. There's avant-garde there's different types so i don't know what type i was at that time but i was some type and i was really inspired by that and then not until i worked at lucky chanks which you can get a job at um <laughs> <clears throat> um i didn't actually like play with makeup full-on until i was there because there it was like i was i worked with beautiful like female illusionists oh yeah beautiful drag queen and transgender uh -huh. women. And I mean, I, uh, were, and, were you there at the same time as Laverne Cox? Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, and she, you know, like she's gorgeous. And so I'm there, like I walk in my first day and I'm like, one eyeshadow. And I'm like, <laughs> right. I'm ready to serve you some chicken wings, you know? But it now, was- explain for the audience at home who doesn't understand the concept of Lucky right. Chang's. It's actually- Because it was a very specific and interesting place. Right, so basically, Lucky Chang's is an Asian fusion restaurant where we serve not so delicious food. I can say that now because it's closed. <laughs> right, exactly. But, um, and we as drag queens were the servers. And then we also had lap dancers uh -huh. and then we also had performers. Uh -huh. So everyone that worked there, including like the bus boys were bus drag queens. Wow. So, <clears throat> so it was all that. And then, um, so we would just serve dinners. Like we would serve annoying bridesmaids. Uh, I mean, uh, bride, <laughs> bridal parties. Right. Um, we would serve like, you know, tranny chasers. Yeah. We would serve like, young kids who wants to be queens. We would serve like out of towners, like people just sort of walk by and they see a Chinese restaurant and they think it's gonna be something. Right. And it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> that so, lady show looks right. different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that lady's only wearing one eye Actually, channel. I think when they saw me, they were like, that not so lady is not so lady. What's happening? So anyway, that was the whole concept of it, and it was really fun. I mean, yeah. we, I got to kiki with all the girls. It was really fun. They all like really inspired and helped me to become better in my craft. And um, and the money was cute, you mm -hmm. know, Lady Red. Like I said, if you had just tried to get your um, legal documents, you would have gotten <laughs> a job there. And she tried. <laughs> I was born here. <laughs> so you said the same. No. But that's, a lot, of, that's a lot a, of talent came through. A lot of NYC yeah. talent kind of went through Lucky Chang's as a sort of starting off point for for much bigger things. I believe so. I mean, definitely um, kind of like a a rite of passage, maybe, yeah. because they allowed you to be who you are as a queen. They allowed allowed you who you are as a person, and it was like. It was work, but it was amazing. Yeah, you know, like the environment was great. Um, I mean, after two thirty, it's a little bit shady. Right, of course, <laughs> <laughs> but that was part of the fun too, wasn't it? Yeah, but I was at home by then. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you were there, so you were working during the day and then kind of dragging it at night. Mm -hmm. And then when, then you moved to LA, right? I did. So fast forward in 2007, I moved to Los Angeles. I was working as a visual merchandiser for this company called Intermix and they wanted to expand in Los Angeles. 
And so I put a bid to come here and do the expansion with the company, and they said yes. So it was, um, it was a, a moment I had to, like a, a, you know, one of those moments that you had, you had to just like take and um, go for, and if it was gonna happen, it was. If it wasn't, it wasn't. Right. But it happened, and so I moved. And it's really funny because when I was on the plane flying here, you know, there's always like people that move to Hollywood want to be something, right? And I think people that move to LA, like not everyone, but I'm saying some people, they move here and they want to be this or that. But it's funny because as I was coming here, I was like, I want Angina to be famous. Uh huh. Like as a joke, but not really. And so, <laughs> a joke for the out loud. Yeah, and just serious like, you for know, the inside. Hello, universe. If you can maybe make this happen for me. Um, right. There's no yeah. weird problem with yeah. me being a bald, one eyeshadow makeup yeah. little lady. So <laughs> this should be easy, mainstream. So, but when I moved here, I actually stopped doing drag because that was so much a part of my life in New York, right. as well as other things. And the, one of the main reasons I moved to Los Angeles was not only to continue to pursue my career but also because I wanted to kind of balance out my life. You know, um, it was a year after I found out I was HIV positive, and so there was a lot of um, personal things that I had to overcome and work through, and I felt that LA was that really good balanced city where I can get right. city living, career like growing, and then you know, have sunshine every single day of the year. Yeah, certainly a good place for your mood. <laughs> yeah, Whereas exactly. New York can be kind of oppressive, yes. especially if you're dealing with news like that, trying to figure out your life, your health, all that kind of stuff. LA seems like a, a fresh start. Yeah, and even, you know, like I visited LA before I moved here and there was always like, you know, people from New York always like, I hate LA, but like, I loved LA. Uh -huh. Like I visited in 2002 and I couldn't wait to like move, you know what yeah. I mean? So um, anyway, so that's what happened. And when I moved here and I said that to the universe, I got here, I started working, I got so busy that I actually put Angina away. Wow. Yeah, it was for about six months where I decided no one, China. I need to focus on my career as a visual merchandiser. I'm working a lot. At this point, we were like opening stores, and I was the one who's leading the team to like do all the visual right. merchandising. So it was a big job. Yeah. And um, not until one night, I went to um, Mustache Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> um, in downtown, I forget what the place was called, but I saw Raja perform. Uh huh. And I've never met Raja, I've never seen her, uh, I've never even knew about her, you know, because at this point I didn't, like, there's only, like, New York queens that I really knew right. about. Um, so I saw her, and um, it, it instantly I was like, oh my god, I need to do drag again. It was right. in a level where I was just like, that is not possible. Because she did, was the, she did through the, through fire, the fire as if she had been in a Has, fire. She's been, <laughs> yes, it, I, I have goosebumps actually. It's, <laughs> it was one of those moments when you just saw a creative genius reignite this fire that you have kept low mm. and you're just like, who is she and why do I want to kill her sort of, right. you know? <laughs> and um, so New Year's that year in 2007 is when I brought it back out. Uh huh. Actually, so it wasn't even six months because I moved in August and New Year's is December, January. Yeah. And yes, so it that's was. What it is, <laughs> uh -huh. So it was like five months, and and <laughs> now she's here. Yeah, and so you started performing around the the city, and you were doing shows again. I was. And then you. This, some woman kept coming up to you being like, yes. we're doing this show, uh, and you should do it. You were like, honey, I have a full-time job, and I'm about to do a show, so fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. It's like, I, you know, because of Raja, I was able to, like, kind of put myself out there and just make myself available to do drag and do shows all around town. And lucky enough, this guy, Nacho, from, and Barbecue, you know Barbecue. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, they were like, we'll give you the stage one night, just tell us when. And I was like so nervous because, you know, at Lucky Chang's, when I perform, it was different performance. Like, I know, I, it, I, you get to like build this relationship with someone on a, like these, these people on a table and you like get to kiki and converse. And so when you perform on stage in front of them, you're not so nervous. Right, because right, you're, yeah, you've already. They were like, she brought us the lo yeah, mein, yeah. and the lo mein was good. Her, her egg roll was amazing. <laughs> you know? 
So there is that kind of relationship. But here, I don't know the crowd here, and I didn't know the crowd here. But I perform, and it was like amazing, and it was like taken really well. And I really, I really just really have to thank Nacho Barbecue and like Raja for reigniting Anjana to come back to life from the yeah. attic, you know, because I really boxed. Well, one box. I boxed up one box of drag and I put it up in the attic and I was like, you're gonna stay here for a little bit right. while I get crazy with boy works. Hey, queen.